All right, what is philosophy? Important subject, basic to a lot of things. Philosophy, a good way to look at it, start out with um, the etymology of the word. I'm tired. Philosophy, <clears throat> love of wisdom. That's the etymology. This comes from love of wisdom. So in ancient Greece, there were some people called the sophists, wise people who would teach others. However, <clears throat> um, as happens and as has again in kind of modern times with most so-called philosophers, gets out of hand, so they become um, divorced from what wisdom really is. So Socrates, Plato came up with the idea of philosophy, a love of wisdom, a commitment to wisdom or commitment to the truth, as opposed to those who merely talk it um, in name only. They're doing something that's really antithetical to what wisdom is really about. Philosophy is a love of wisdom. Um, and we know what wisdom is, and that helps you get an idea of what philosophy is more technically. Um, so philosophy came into being with Plato, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, he's the one that really instituted it and put it, identified all the parts, asked the basic questions, got a lot of, a lot of things wrong, but got some questions. Whereas we know all around the world, there were people who were wise. Wisdom has been around for, you know, centuries and millennia before Plato. Um, it's just systematizing it, making it more explicit was Plato's um, genius and achievement. Um, you know, because at that point, you had all these cultures that were, could kind of be on their own. Um, China, England, isolated on this little island. Um, but in Greece, all these different countries were coming together in that general area, Mesopotamia, ancient Greece. Um, and so the Greeks had to deal with these different cultures. Um, it's a good hypothesis I heard. Um, so <clears throat> different clothes, different religions, different food, different thoughts. And they were like, what do we believe? What's true? Whereas other people could just ignore the outsiders. Um, and so they were at a crux in history and in geography. So that's what, um, why it seems to have happened there. But um, they really developed wisdom. We know wisdom is having the knowledge and ability to judge. So you can give good advice make judgments about right or wrong you know it's knowing the individual and the bigger picture and knowing how to think about something correctly that's an, a basic important part of it then when you develop that more um you see judging people we get right and wrong morality and ethics um but doing it correctly then we get logic and epistemology and those are parts of philosophy we got metaphysics, the basic nature of things. What is human nature? Is people have different philosophies. Some are wrong and some are right. Um, just like a lot of other things, people have different views on some things. Um, sometimes it's optional, you know, different career, so what? But of course, sometimes um, there are some things that are just wrong. Um, but Metaphysics. What's the nature of the world? Can we know it or not? Um, is it a world we can live in and achieve, or are we doomed to failure? You know, um, things like that. Um, you know, is there hardship in it? We got to struggle, but we can do good things and live and enjoy life. Um, or, as some people think, 
everything's unfair and we've got to rob and steal and lie because that's just the way things are. You know, it's some people's perspective on the world that isn't right. Or some people airy fairy going around, nothing's ever wrong, you know? It's all right. Um, you know, so you see different people in their overall outlook on life in the world. Um, you know, is it a place where you can like actually know things and study and be successful in figuring things out? Or are you lost and you just give up and do stuff? Um, two, epistemology. That's the science of understanding. How do we know things? Is knowledge possible? Are we doomed to ignorance? Um, as some people think, you know, some people think we don't know anything. And that's just kind of like intellectual bullying, because clearly if they claim they don't know anything. That they're, They know something right there, so it's like self-contradiction. Self-exclusion fallacy. No one knows anything, but I know this, and I know that that's the way the world is, and so on and so forth. Um, but what is logic? How does perception come into play? How reasoning is based on perception? Um, the nature of induction, the nature of concepts, the nature of definition, um, nature of science. It's much broader than just logic, um, which are the rules of correct thinking. Um, these, this involves more issues. Um, three, you know, so like, do we live in a world where you can have a dog or cat and take good care of them and learn how to treat them well based on science or not? That's someone's basic philosophic out outlook that they're putting into practice um, in that kind of situation. Um, ethics, morality, what is right, what is wrong? Here we got what's the truth, here we got what is right, what is good, what's a good life, how should we live? What should a human being do to live a good life? Um, politics, what kind of a society should we live in? Um, because humans have no free will, some people think they're wrong, but they think we have no free will. So we can't really know anything. Um, we have to be told what to do. So ethics is like being ordered to do. And so in politics, you got forced totalitarian government has to tell you what to do because you're incapable of figuring, of knowing right. You don't know right on your own because you're incapable of it. That'd be a bad philosophy, but it's a philosophical viewpoint. Um, or as Aristotle identified, and as Galileo said, why human reasoning must be placed second to direct experience. So if you have something like that, notice that Aristotle is a father of freedom because you got every human being has senses and they can be in direct contact with reality and know things. And then we have free will, it's our nature. So we can be right and wrong in our, in our conclusions, but we can be right. It's a fact, you look, people can. They can be successful and be happy. Um, and so, since we can do that, we can each individually, we have access to the world and we can think about it and process it and know the truth and know what's good. We can figure things out on our own and so we should be free. We should not be forced to do things because that is contrary to our nature and we can't see what is actually good or not, what is true what is good versus what is false or what is evil. So it leads to freedom in politics. As opposed to Plato, who thought the world and us were of such nature that the evidence of the, sense, evidence of the senses was invalid, full of delusions and lies, and you would turn away from it to do science. So if that's the case, notice a lot of us, man, we're immersed in experience. We love it being out in the sun, going to the beach, going for a hike in the mountains, playing with our cats or dogs, going to sports events, listening to music and all this stuff, eating good food. We're just deluded by the evidence of the senses and experience and all the sensation stuff. So we can't know the good because we're carried away with this stuff. Whereas someone who turns away from all that 
turns inside their head, turns away from the evidence of the senses. They somehow know what the real good is. Um, now you can see that's unscientific. Divorce from reality, to actually do that, that's like loony. You know, would you want a doctor to do that? We'll talk about that later, but um, that's like Plato's idea. So in ethics, you have to be told what to do because you're all immersed in this, you and me and most people, we can't figure out and know what's good on our own. So we have to be told what to do. So totalitarianism in politics. But there are some other examples, like I say, with Dr. Um, someone who builds a bridge. You know, if you have someone you need to take to a neurologist, you want someone who's been like Aristotle, Galileo, Newton, Darwin. They're immersed in experience. They've dug into things, looked at different animals, learned about electricity, done experiments on their own, They've actually tried things, worked on like cadavers and stuff to see what it's like to work actually with animals and these things to get their skills down, get their knowledge and understanding of physics and chemistry and biology and working with tools so that they can do brain surgery. You would not want someone who says, I'm a Platonist. I've never done dirty experimentation. Like, ooh, experience? That would just leave me full of lies. I've turned away from experience and looked inside my head and made up the perfect nervous system and imagined and theorized what the perfect operation would be. And now let's do it. You know, you'd run. That's crazy. It's like, don't touch me. They wouldn't be able to do anything, you know? It's like illogical insane. You want someone who's immersed in experience, not someone who's refused to do any experimentation in electricity because it's dirty and just an experiment. And that's not like a fake example. The Germans, some Germans actually rejected Ohm, who came up with Ohm's law, how voltage, current, and resistance were related. They rejected it because it, he did it by experience, experiment. And they said, we're gentlemen, we get it by pure reasoning. We're real scientists, not you. You know, loony, it's in history. Look it up if you want, I recommend it. The philosophy and the history of science are important. Um, or would you want someone like that who built a bridge? Like, you know, if you wanna drive over a bridge, you want someone who's like, maybe like played with Legos or sticks or something when they're growing up, designed a bunch of things, um, houses, bridges, learned a bunch of physics, seen what it takes to stand, so some support something, hold up a bunch of weight, seen how movement of earthquakes, earth relates to it, wind and all this stuff. Someone who's really looked at a bunch of bridges, been involved in their building, design, the building of other things, knows the physics and engineering of that. Then, okay, a good person, they can build a bridge. Otherwise, that's the Aristotelian. You want someone who's like a Platonist? They say, I've never done any experiments on building bridges. I don't want the delusion of the evidence of the senses. I just experience would like leave me full of lies. I've never like learned about that stuff. I've just read stuff in books and turned away from experience. I made up the perfect bridge in my mind. And this is what I'm going to develop for you to drive over because it's perfect. You know, loony. Hell no. That's what it would be like. Um, you know, you want someone, as I say, like Galileo or Newton, Marie Curie, immersed in experience. Um, so that helps you see kind of what some of these are and the importance of philosophy. It's not irrelevant. It's critical. And then aesthetics, which clearly I do not have in my handwriting. The crosses we have to bear, um, but, you know, what is good art? What is bad art? What's the purpose of art? Um, how does it help us in life? How does it relate to human cognition and values in the basic world? This expresses someone's viewpoint on that. Um, so, for example, another one is like in dealing with animals, dogs, 
cats, horses, you know, we should want someone who is like immersed in the world, who is good ideas, who looks at what the nature of the thing is and doesn't try to tell it what it is, doesn't say experience. I can't learn from that. I need to like go to peer reasoning. And that's basically someone who tells the world the way it is. Dog, you are this way. Horse, you are this way. Someone good. Um, I'll put some links to some people who are good, like with horses, and you can see how beautiful it is. Um, but when people really look at what a cat is, what a dog is, what a horse is, like, you know, a common example is like the dog whisperer, um, and you got the horse whisperer. Someone who looks at the animal and works with it figures out what the nature of the thing is because we can do that and builds now all, all their reasoning about it from the evidence of the senses and experience, not convention. Um, like Joe Camp and Solo Horse does a good job of illustrating this, how he was caught up in convention at first and then started reading. Joe Camp is the one that did the Benji movies. Um, later in his life, he got into horses, wrote some great books like The Soul of the Horse, which is awesome, which shows how he went from conventional thinking and dealing with horses, some like errant epistemology and stuff. But he had a good epistemology, so independent thinker. Um, dealt with science and reasoning more and saw what it really was, what a horse was, what it was to really work with the horse. And actually had um, better relationship with them, was able to do better things with them, really enjoy his horses, let them be horses, let people and horses work together positively in cooperation and with good things without a lot of some of the conflicts some people want to bring into life. Um, but some people will be immersed in experience like that. And, you know, they'll be good like the dog whisperer or some lady, what she might be called the cat whisperer. I forgot her name right now. Wrote some books. Um, and you'll feed it better. You know how to exercise the animal better, um, whether it should be in a stall or not, if it's a herd animal or not how it needs others of like kind or not, um, then you can live a better life. We should. What do we want to do with like some pets? We love them. We should take good care of them. We shouldn't just go by convention and like have our heart in the right place, but be doing a bunch of damage to the dog or cat or horse. You know, then you find out, then you don't feel good about yourself. But remember, it's convention's fault, not your fault that you're doing some errant things in regard to dogs and cats and horses maybe. I don't know you, of course, but some people are just doing what's conventional. Everyone does it. Um, and it's not really taught in school how to think independently about animals, how to do something like this. So there's a lot of things not in our favor. Um, but people like that will love their animals and take care of them. However, then you got someone like Descartes. Because of a bad metaphysic and epistemology, Descartes, you know, the guy that came up with Cartesian coordinates, which is good, but philosophy, bad. Physics, no one cares about bad. Um, but um, because of some weird ideas, you know, thinking like the experience and the evidence of the senses is not real knowledge, um, they had this weird idea that only if you're self-aware are you really do you have really knowledge um and so they thought animals were just machines dogs cats horses and small kids um didn't really know anything yet so you can beat them It'll, you know and then you beat them and they whine it looks like they're like doing something like a human it looks like they're crying and in pain but they're not really because that's just the evidence of the senses lying, is what Descartes would say. Now, is that loony and you want to, like, tell that person to go to hell or what? Like, screw that. You know, this stuff, this philosophy stuff is not ivory tower, irrelevant. This is serious stuff that comes up in our everyday lives that affects how we feel, how we live, how we take care of the things we love, if we're really immersed in the world and living well or not. You know, so a dog or cat or horse looks like they're in pain. 
or like the two year old. So what? I mean, a six month old. So what? They don't really. They're not aware that they're in pain. They're just in pain, which is not really pain, you know, because it's not real knowledge. It's just fake. So go ahead and beat the dog, and you're training it. Um, you know, screwy. Um. So what they think about animals and humans and consciousness, what it is to have knowledge, all this comes into play in a situation like that. It's practical. It is not ivory tower stuff. Real philosophy is wisdom. How do we deal with things in the world? So there is essentially the basic idea of what philosophy is. Proper philosophy, not some of the fake counterfeit stuff you find nowadays, um, is a commitment to truth, a love of wisdom, looking at the big picture. It's a comprehensive, systematic, unified, total knowledge of the world. Um, it's about what the world is like and how we know things so we can live in a good society and know what's right and do what's right or wrong we can know the truth and have good science it can help us with our dogs and cats and not be do screwy things like injure them you know we can take care of the people we love and have a good family and a good society and take better care of our friends um you know like is honesty a value or not um do you want to be just to people or not you know, be fair, earn things, trade fairly with things, with people. Um, so clearly important fundamental stuff. Then, you know, as I say, without getting some of this right, we can't do science correctly or deal with animals or farming or things like that. So philosophy, please study it good the good stuff think about digging into things you know some nowadays you're going to find a lot of junk a lot of like pseudo philosophy got to study more of the classics um look at the questions aristotle and plato well the plato was wrong on a lot of things aristotle wrong on some things but less so but look at his method find some people who study the classics and look at those questions and kind of develop them in your own life um especially this know how we know so there's philosophy in brief peace